Rick, before we get into the game, just uh, start with a thought on the atmosphere in the building tonight. Yeah, it was incredible. Uh, I was told about it. It was pretty impressive um, how loud that the fans were. Even when it was we were down two to one, they were, they didn't they didn't waver. It was really good to see. Quinn uh, was in here moments ago. Called your performance a mature one in terms of sticking with it, being behind early. You, know, you go behind again in the second, but finding a way in the third is that how you saw it as well? Yeah, I think killing those three penalties, you know, um, was big. They got the one, <coughs> you know, and um, I think those three killing those off. You know, they score there. It's, it's two goal lead. So I think that was big, um, a key moment with the penalty killing. When you are as physical as you are, does that put an even bigger premium on the penalty killing? Because you're, you're going to have to kill some at some point. It seemed like you guys were doing everything you could to be physical tonight. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> they're unfortunate penalties. I, I don't think we're undisciplined. I think it was a well ref game. I just think things happen sometimes. Um, you know, we're going to be physical. And you, you know, you, but you know, you don't want to take penalties, but you still got to play physical. So we just got to be, you know, got to make sure. I want to ask you about Lindholm. I mean, you, you matched him up against the O'Reilly line. A big opening goal to get you guys going, and then really nice play behind the net to get the puck to Garland on the Joshua goal. Just how important is a game like that for him? Because maybe it wasn't going offensively the way he wanted earlier in the year. Well, I, I mean, let's face it. That's why we, we picked, we acquired him for tonight. I mean, you know, <clears throat> he was banged up, hurt and stuff. But this is, uh, and you know, when he didn't play there, um, he skated and stuff like that, which helped. But I think these are the games why you acquired Lindholm. He was a he was. Really good 200-foot game, really good. JT spends a lot of time in that game against the McCarran line, like their fourth line. Um, you sort of chose that uh, after they started the game with McCarran, but it, it was continuous throughout the game. It, was that your call, something you worked for? No, not really. It was just, um, you know, I, it was more like I think Millsy deserved to, to start. And so they were starting the McCarroll line every uh, period, so that that's probably some of it. It just happened that way. Um, I just think that it wasn't. I wasn't matching it. It just. I don't know why it just happened that way. And I, I'm not going to pull Millsy off. I thought as the game went on, I think Millsy willed the team. I thought he played really well. The two-one goal that they score. Um, looked like it was a pretty close yeah. call between uh, with Evangelista stick and, and when the puck maybe went by. Um, did you have like a still, like how confident were you when you decided not to challenge? Well, I, I believe in the, the video, uh, Dylan Crawford. <clears throat> I think Clark, he was up there, Ian Clark, who, uh, you know, obviously he's a great goalie. I, I, I rely on them. I, I saw it, maybe saw two cool glances at it, and I, I, I did swear, are you effing sure? That was, and I don't like doing that to the guys because it's a pressure. It's on them, but it's on me. Like you know, it's um, and I and you know, I go regardless of the fact. I, I believe what what they say. So it wasn't really. It's a moot point at that point. If we if we, we make the wrong decision, we regardless, it's, it's not their fault because uh, it's a pressure situation right there. Rick uh, J T was asked about Dakota tonight, and he said, "I'm not sure he knows how good he is." I was wondering when you became became a believer in his potential, and also what you know have you found is the best method to get that out of Dakota? Well, last year I believed in him. Like I, I, I said, he's a tw like I've really you know the, the local guys. I thought he could score twenty goals, and he probably should have if he didn't get hurt. Um, he just Dakota just doesn't know how good he can be. Um, he know he knew there was another level there. We just had to whether push him or find it. Um, and I give him all the credit in the world because he, uh, you know, I think he, he knows now what it's going to take. You know, he needs a, I thought this summer um, he learned from it. And I think the him and Garland together have really kind of added this, uh, like a swagger to our team as that, you know, tactically the third line. The, um, I think that's really helped. Um, and they both, Garland and him together have really taken a role leadership-wise, a, a chunk of it. And I think that's really helped Dakota's game. Hey, Rick, you, uh, they say you never critique a win, and you said this morning that you had a really good feel about your club, mm -hmm. thought it would play better as the series went on. Uh, things you don't like, you don't like shots mm -hmm. that miss the net, and you don't like stick penalties. W where are you going to have to be even better Tuesday <clears> night? Well, you're right. I think I think there was some after we you know we got to hit the net. I think uh, 
Sometimes we're a little too fine on the shots. So I think that's something we get better at. You know, we were aggressive tonight. Some of those penalties, I don't know. Maybe we can clean up. But, it, I, I, you know, I think a couple were unfortunate. Um, you know, there's some there's there's parts of it. I thought our forecheck got better. Um, the second half, I didn't like it early on. I think I think Nashville did a hell of a job of get breaking the puck on us. We were late, and then we adjusted after the second. And I think uh, the Garland goal w was a a testament of the, the the guys listening after the second period. Yeah. Rick, uh, all season long, you talked about winning one on one battles, the staples, etc. Um, you, you look at the performance tonight. How would you assess? your team, say, in the one-on-one -on -one battle department? No, it, it was good. I mean, I think there's another level. I think our edge battles off the draws, is that's the one thing we got to improve on. I, I didn't like our edge battles. I shouldn't say I didn't like them. I, th I think that has to be improved on. I, I think a lot of, um, I'm not saying Nashville had a lot of chances. It was, a, you know, both, it was a back and forth game, but pretty low event in some respect. But I thought some of the chances they got were off their draws. So we got that's one thing we got to work on. JT was talking about winning those one-on-one -on -one battles He's in the right. offensive zone. I mean, you get a 30-second possession sometimes if you can win that one-on-one -on -one battle. How paramount is it to your team's success to be successful in those one-on-ones? Yeah, and it's just not two or three guys. It's a, it's a team effort, um, and it's uncomfortable. You know, I'm a, I'm a big body position first, then the puck, and I think sometimes we were going for the puck early on, and it, um, I think that's something we improve on. But I thought we got better at it, which is good. It, on the first goal, the Zucker goal off the wing, it was off a face-off. Was that a similar situation? Because, I mean, Petey got tossed, Lafferty takes the draw, and it looked like the two of them kind of got crossed up on where to go. Is that what happened there? Well, Lafferty's a centerman, so yeah. that's Laff. He's, yeah. uh, you know, uh, he, he, he went out as a right winger. He's got to be the centerman. Yeah. He stays there. Yeah. I'm not saying it, you know, would have prevented a goal. Maybe. But, yeah, Laff's got to – he's got to play centerman, not wing. And then on the, the Hughes goal, I mean, yeah. that's exactly what you're talking about. You get in there. I mean, that, the Miller line was dominant on the forecheck all night. Or the, the, the third goal, the go-ahead yeah. goal. Sure. I mean, was that just ex everything you wanted to see from your team in one sequence? Yeah. Um, we made the push. The crowd was in it. Um, and it was a tip goal, I think, right? I think somebody, t I don't know, or whether Huggy got it. I'm not sure who got it. But if you, if you yeah, Suter got it. Yeah, I think it was a well, we had layers there. I think we had some traffic, and then you know we tipped. You know we're a pretty good tip team. I think we were one of the better teams at that. That that's one of our you know one of our bread and butters of getting to those levels. Rick, you know how important confidence could be for a player. Um, when Lindholm has a game like he has tonight, yeah. a guy who maybe was pressing a little bit, how can he build on that going forward? You know, can he kind of use this as a foundation for a deep run if successful for him? <laughs> Excuse me. I think he's played 800 games. Um, you know, he, he was hurt there. Things, you know, whatever. Didn't go his way. I didn't see panic in his game. I, I just love his demeanor. It's like, hey, I'm ready to go. Like, um, whether he can build on it, I just think he he knows how to play these type of games. So I, I was never worried about him. Um, wasn't worried about his play or who he's going to be. We knew, That's why... You know whether he goes against O'Reilly a lot or you know Diesel face us. He's you know he's good at that stuff, right? He knows what he's doing. So I was never concerned about his play. I always knew he's a you know guy that's played a lot of games and knows what to do out there in pressure situations. Uh, Rick, we've talked about how the emotions are higher here in the playoffs. Obviously, when you get those back-to-back -back goals in 12 seconds, I'm curious how mm -hmm. different of a feeling is it from a regular season taking a lead? Mm -hmm. Like, what is the feeling on the bench there when you get those back-to-back -back goals? <clears throat> well, it's huge because I, I think obviously we scored that second goal, the tie, and it looked like everybody breathed a little bit, even the fans. Like, okay, we had that goal, but I got to credit that next shift. You know, we it, we didn't rest on it. You know, we got the puck in deep, and obviously got the got the goal there. So um, that's the sort of stuff you you know, in playoff hockey, you build on momentum, you get the crowd going. You know, you you, you try to. You try to build up momentum, you know, the, the, get that sh first shot on net right after a goal. I like that. Or get the puck. I think sometimes you rest, and I didn't see us rest tonight. And just Thatcher Demko, a couple of massive saves early yeah. on that pad save, and then later in the Beautiful, yeah. as well. What do you think about just his ability to kind of create that feeling and emotion again in the building? <laughs> well, it's, you know, I've seen it all, you know, what I've been here, a year and a half, I've seen it many times. 
you know, where he's just made that spectacular save to keep us in. You know, it's a two-goal swing. You know, when, it, when, when a goal, you know, you're down one up and the guy makes a save, that, you know, it's a two-goal swing that he just made for you. It's you huge. Uh, Rick, the JT said uh, er earlier that um, <coughs> basically the first period was so physical that it didn't even matter if there was a puck on the ice, that there was uh, so much banging and yeah. crashing going on. Um, how does that play to the strengths of this team? And now that you've sort of seen one game of this matchup, do you think that it's a matchup that's <coughs> going to bring the best out of your group? <coughs> well, I like the physicality, but we can't run out of position to make hits. That, that's really what it comes down to. You know, you got to, you got to use the fans, you know, use the emotion to your, you know, to your advantage, but you can't run out of position. I think sometimes when you run out of position, that's when you'll see they hit the big, I think they had a couple of chances where they hit the, the back side because I think we over pursue. So I think as hopefully as the playoffs go on, you find that balance, but I, you know, I'm never going to take the aggressiveness or the, the passion out of the guys. It's just, you got to make sure that you, know, you just don't run around too much. The guys talked a lot about being patient and how their maturity showed by being able to turn the game yeah. over in the third period. It, it felt like things that we were talking about going all the way back to, to training camp yeah. even, stick to itiveness and, and we, our habits and preparedness have to be better. Is, is all that work you've put in through the season, did it show up in that third period? Yeah, I think if you're going to be successful, there's going to be times where you've you got to be comfortable playing a, a one nothing. You're down one nothing, or you're down, you might down 2 nothing, and there's 30 minutes left in the game. Maybe in the past, you know, you might dive in or guys get frustrated and, they, you know, they try to push the, the pace too much. Um, I think we've learned, especially the last 15, 20 games, just to hang in there. It's okay. And I think that was a temperament tonight. Hopefully we, it's another learning lesson that, hey, it's a good thing. You know, and there might be a chance. We might be down to it. It might not go away. It's okay. Like, I think you just got to keep be patient. Uh, a lot of the really, if you watch a lot of the good teams like Tampa over the years, they're okay being down 2-1 with 10 minutes left. They don't, they, they just stick with it. And I think you can learn from the teams like that, their resolve. 